Okay. We're live. Yes, we are. <laughs> Let's just give it one sec and give people an opportunity to join and then we'll get started. Okay. All right. Let's get started. So thanks for joining us tonight and welcome to Barney Miller's Tech and Design Facebook Live event. Tonight's topic of discussion is home theater design. I'm Risa Schultz and I'm joined by Allison Lopez and we're from We Connect and we are going to be moderating tonight's conversation. We're excited to be joined by a panel of experts. So I'm gonna ask each of you to introduce yourselves. Tell us your name, your company, and a little bit about what you do. Um, Barney, let's start with you. Okay, I'm Barney Miller. I'm the third generation of Barney Millers Incorporated. We're a 98 and a half year old company in downtown Lexington. And we supply electronic systems for the business and home environments and uh, just a great staff. <laughs> and really, really happy to have Andrew and Kevin here uh, just just great, great people to have on our show tonight. Perfect. Okay, Kevin, why don't you go next? Yeah, I'm Kevin Kerwin. I work for Mike Kerwin Homes. I'm a second generation, so I'm not quite as far as Barney is yet. We've got one more generation. Uh, but we're a higher-end custom home builder here in Lexington, Kentucky, and we've been in business for probably 36 years, I believe, now. Uh, great. So I just appreciate you guys having me on. Perfect. And Andrew? Hey there, everyone. I'm Andrew Turner with Sony Electronics. I'm a technical specialist uh, for our premium home products, so our projectors, our sound systems, and video displays. So I get to, I have the uh, the great job of getting to play with all these toys that uh, that we have here today. Tell you, uh, you know, all of again, all of our uh, home theater products, home cinema setups, and get to uh, get to test and train and tell uh, tell everyone about our great products we have here at Sony. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are excited to have a conversation about home theater design. Um, if you're watching at home and you have questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the chat and we'll try to answer those towards the end of our conversation. So let's get started. Barney, as you said, you've been in business for 98 and a half years, which is amazing. So you have built a number of home theaters over the, year and you've, over the years and you've seen the technology change. So tell us, what is a home theater? And then talk to us about the difference between a standalone home theater and an integration in an existing room in your home, such as a family room or a great room. Sure, sure. So uh, home theater, I think, is a specific space dedicated to watch movies, listen to music, play video games, various different sources. It can be a uh, dedicated room with soundproofing and, and acoustic treatments, or it can be a multi-purpose room in a basement, in a family room, that type of thing. So it, it kind of depends on, you know, the, the environment that it's in. But I, I think that this has been one of the most important, impactful years for home theater in my lifetime. Um, with this COVID going on and Warner Brothers Studios and people like that doing first run movies in your home now, it's, it's just an amazing time for home theater and uh, products that Sony has, 4K video, it, it just keeps getting better and better all the time. Back in the day, we used to have to invent what was a surround sound system, but now the uh, the audio quality is rivals that of any movie theater that you would ever go in. So just a really fun time to be in the home theater business. Great. Great. Awesome. So Kevin, we know you're a premier home builder in, in Barney's territory. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the process when you're building a home and you're, you're working with a homeowner about, you know, what goes into planning a home theater from a builder's perspective? Absolutely. You know, early on in the process, you know, usually the homeowner will have a good idea whether they want an actual true home theater or not. And once we identify that the customer wants that, that, we, that goes one of the first things you have to plan on. Because obviously you've got to know what size they want it. And that's where you bring someone like Barney in at an early stage and get them kind of selecting what kind of products they want. They can really specify that area for exactly the equipment that Barney recommends that they would like. So it's, it's a, we've got to work hand in hand and it's a, I can't say the first time you draw it might not always be the best, but you know, through a trial and error process, usually you can figure out exactly what they want. Right. What about the role of pre-wiring? That's really important, I believe. And we always recommend to our homeowners, even if you're not going to do the full 
surround sound and big screen and every projector and everything that you might as well just rough in for all of it. Because roughing in is, as Barney will tell you, is a very minimal price. And then it's always there. It's always in your drywall. You always got the option to go back later and finish it. And then you're not tearing up your house, you know, at a later date. So I, I always think pre-wired is the way to go. Right, right. Yeah, so we, we know how technical, you know, designing uh, a home theater could be, um, depending if it's a standalone room. And, and these days, even in a grand room or a family room or a basement, as Barney mentioned earlier. So Andrew, I know you're, you're sitting with a bunch of goodies. Can you tell us or show us a little bit about some of the equipment that we can uh, include in a home theater? Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, we have the uh, the pleasure of being able to outfit the home theater. Barney's got an amazing crew that can help specify and recommend the right components. Uh, you know, make sure it's all installed properly. Uh, Kevin's going to build that uh, that room to, uh, to house all of these components. But then it's, uh, it's really kind of up to, up to us here at Sony to provide a, a number of the pieces to, uh, to make all of this work. So I'm broadcasting to you uh, today here from my, uh, from my personal cinema, which I'm going to uh, kind of throw up a, uh, my, my front wall here, uh, where I've got a uh, you know, pretty simple setup with a 135 inch screen. Uh, here we, we can uh, you know, do screen sizes. Uh, you know, what we look at as a home theater is a screen size of you know, north of 85 inches, typically 100 inches or more to go really a truly immersive image. And so a wall-to-wall -wall experience here with 135 really does an amazing job. Uh, I've got a very simple front sound stage of my speakers with two left and right, a center speaker and a subwoofer down here. And again, my system here is just a very simple with a audio video receiver, one of our ES line receivers, a 4K Blu-ray player, and then a streaming device. So uh, I'm using an Apple TV here, my, uh, my personal system here at home. Very cool. And, and can you show us the projector? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, my room is uh, is kind of more of a multi-purpose space. So uh, uh, I get to use this for all of my uh, my trainings, all of my uh, uh, work from home activities. So here in the back of my room, I have uh, two, actually two projectors right now, since this is kind of a working laboratory. Uh, but I've got cabinets here to uh, to store uh, store all of my equipment. So so my room, while it is a personal cinema, uh, it really is very much a multi-purpose space for uh, for both work and entertainment purposes. Very good, very cool. So you know, Barney, we we know from being in the industry, right, that um, you know there's a number of things that have to go into a home theater, whether it's a standalone home theater or whether it's in the grand room or the basement. So we're talking, you know, you know, Andrew just alluded and talked about screen size. So we know one of the first things that you have to think about is where the seating is going to be in, in the room and then everything else works around it, right? So exactly. can you talk to us a little bit about that whole setup, how it all works together, the lighting, the audio, the screen size, the seating distance? Sure, so you wanna make sure the environment's right and that people can see the, full screen properly. So you don't want seating in front of the bottom of the screen, for instance, or somebody's head in front of them. It's pretty common for us to do at least two rows in a home. And it, just think of it as, as a regular movie theater that you would go to. You don't want somebody to block part of that picture. And then you want the sound quality to be very you know, immersive. Um, you know, as far as acoustic treatments, that makes the room sound the best it can possibly sound. If you've got a dedicated home theater, it'll be the quietest room in your house. It'll also be less fatiguing on the ears and the best place to watch anything, whether it's a ball game, a video game, a movie, or just listen to a listen to some music. Maybe even go in there and read a book. You know, it's just a great environment. But uh, you really want to make sure that you can see the entire screen from top to bottom. I think the the lower viewing angle, uh, the lower part of the screen is the most crucial to be able to see because almost everybody can see the top of the screen. But, you know, if we, we've got people in front of you, you know, will climb back and you're reclined back, you want to make sure you can see things properly. Right. So, right. so I was going to say, I had one thing I wanted to add to that, if I could, here is one of the biggest problem uh, issues I sometimes see is actually people putting too small of a screen in their home. You know, you look at you know, a 65, 75, you see these as big screens, but 
you know, they're, they're really, you know, a, it is a large screen experience, large TV experience, but it's not a theater experience. When, when I go about to helping get out and designing a theater, what we also want to look at is, you know, as Barney said, you're going to those multiple rows. You want to make sure that you're not blocking anybody off. But we also want to look at that kind of that relationship of what's your favorite seat in the theater. I mean, if we're building a building a room to to give you that true theater experience, we want it to to emulate that you know that's that same picture, that same seat that you would get at a uh, at a personal center or at a uh, at a commercial cinema. So you know whether it's that uh, that front row along the rail, more towards the middle. You know, hey, maybe you like to sit all the way at the back. By by looking at your favorite seat, we can design a screen size rate uh, to seating distance ratio that uh, that really exactly duplicates that professional theater experience, but do it in the home. And so that's where you know 120, 130, 140 inch screens in rooms where you're sitting 10, 12 feet back are, are actually not too big at all because they are are able to to give you that same viewing experience. If I, if I could also, is, you know, years ago, right. we sold projectors that had giant pixels, you know, and nowadays with the Sony projectors, you've got literally 8 million pixels. I'm rounding, you know, but 8 million pixels for a 4K projector. So you can sit quite close to a very large image. You can't see any pixelization at all. And it's very film like and just and it's an amazing picture nowadays. Is there a relation, Barney, between the size of the room? Because Kevin is the builder, right? He's he. Is there a size of the room and the size of the screen? I mean, I know you can get close to the screen these days, yeah. but is there like a minimum size the room should be for, uh, say, 120 inches? You know, Andrew's talking about. You know, it can actually be a quite small room. I mean, extra bonus bed, you know, extra bedrooms, a bonus room above a garage. You know, in Kentucky, there's a lot of basements, so that's a fairly common place for home theaters. So, you know, it, 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 I don't know that there's a normal size. I would say the normal size of our screens is 120 inch on front projection. And, you know, there's flat panel TVs, but that doesn't give you quite the immersive experience as a front projector would. So we typically start with clients at 120 inch. We can go down or up from there, but that's kind of the, the meat and potatoes, you might say, of our size. Right. And, you know, that was another question, you know, we had to address was when do you use a regular TV versus a projection, a projector? Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are some people that want to go with like an 85 inch or even a 75 inch flat panel TV, but it doesn't really give you that cinematic experience that you do with a 120 inch screen. It, it's, it's fairly dramatic, the difference. Um, flat panel TVs can be a little brighter, but for the most part, you know, the, the, the projectors are bright enough and the, and the picture quality is fantastic. So we tend to start leaning, if they're talking home theater in a non, you know, not, not really a total family room with a bunch of windows and things like that, then we'll, we'll really recommend projectors. You know, there, if there's a room with a ton of, ton of windows, then we want to talk about window treatments and the ability to, yeah. you know, to, to treat that. Motorized shading, here we come. Exactly. You know, <laughs> um, these days you can't talk about uh, a home theater experience without addressing motorized shades and lighting, right? I mean, that's right. Yeah. Especially, especially as we move into smart homes. Yeah. And, well, and yeah. All oh, that's very cool. And, and our control systems nowadays are so powerful. Um, you know, we've got a, you can hit one button that says movie. The shades can go down, the lights dim. You know, your TV turns on, your surround sound system turns on. You can either access a streaming device or a Blu-ray player or a Kaleidoscape movie server, whatever it may be. And with the touch of one button, it really kind of gets you going. So it, it uh, takes the uh, technophobe out of the, the deal. So people don't have to be nervous about how to operate something. Right. I think it's I think it's awesome that you could, you know, actually have a theater like experience in your in your great room. Um, you know, whereas years ago, that probably wasn't possible, as you, you were saying, with the lighting, you know, now with the invention of motorized shading, it's a lot easier. Um, Andrew, talk to us a little bit about the difference between surround sound and Adobe Atmos. I think a lot, there's a lot of regular people out there, you know, that, that are not techies and into this that, that get really confused with the speaker systems. 
Sure thing. So, yeah, there is a lot of confusion about that and a lot of different technologies and buzzwords that, uh, that you'll hear passed around. You've got, you've got Dolby Surround, you've got Atmos, you've got DTS, you've got Master Audio, you've got all, all of these different, uh, different levels of, of sound processing and, and different, uh, different sound configurations. The great news is that most of your, your current uh, you know, sound pro, sound, surround sound receivers, surround sound products are more or less format agnostic. So they're gonna work well with all of these, uh, these different formats. So a, a surround system can, can be very simple with you know, starting off with just a, a basic sound bar at the front of the room that can, that can produce up to, uh, to seven channels of, of audio coming out of a sound bar. Uh, but typically, when we go into more of a dedicated space or a truly immersive environment, that is going to, uh, to have more speakers uh, throughout the room. Uh, usually, you're looking at a minimum of a of a five to to seven channel system. Uh, we'll have the uh, the uh, the front channels uh, again up here in my system here, the two left and right, and the center channels, and then two speakers for the rear channels in the back. And then for a uh, for an Atmos system, we'll also have an overhead height channel, so you get that really 360 degree uh, you know dome of sound uh, around and above you. Uh, again, it, duplicating what they're doing in commercial uh, commercial cinemas. So right. uh, so so that's that's really kind of the ultimate goal. And you know, again, your surround receivers have the ability to work with all of this content, and also the content is being provided really from a number of different channels. Everything from your 4K Blu-ray, which is gonna deliver your very best in audio video experience, systems like Kaleidoscape, which are a, a, a storage device to your streaming from Netflix and Vudu and you know, Amazon. They have Dolby Atmos and high -def HDR and all of the best audio video content coming from even the streaming services. Can you tell us and define further what a channel is? And I'm only, I know what it is, but I know a lot of people don't. <laughs> sure, As a matter sure. of fact, that was a question on one of our other Facebook. What are you talking about? What are channels? <laughs> sure thing. So when we refer to it as a channel, that's that's one, one speaker location. So, you know, by our center channel, uh, for example, that's where typically all of your dialogue comes from. Uh, on the uh, you know in your in your sound stage, your your left and right channels up front uh, that provides your you know typically that's going to be your music experience, your music and the uh, the soundtrack. Movie soundtracks are a very large percentage of music. So like when I'm selecting a speaker system, I recommend start with a speaker that sounds amazing on music. If you love it, how a speaker sounds on music, as those two left and right front channels matching it with the center channel, surround channels, the, uh, the height channels, all of those extra, extra speakers in the, uh, the system are, is really, really pretty simple because so much of a movie soundtrack is based around music. Awesome. So Kevin, tell us what are some of the benefits that you find in working with someone like Barney Miller Integrator? You know- also, he it's a huge benefit. I know wire. I know wiring is very important, but beyond that, <laughs> well, just you know, what we like to do is we give our customers like the you know, selection process. So I would get my customer to go see Barney or one of his sales reps early on, and that's helps me out a lot because you know I'm not I'm not as knowledgeable as Barney is in his sales team about all this stuff. So they kind of take my customer, take their hand, and lead them through the selection process, and then basically that I'm, I'm kind of out of out of that scenario, and then they just select what they want with Barney and. And Barney tells me what I need to do to make it all work. So it's, it's a huge benefit to work with a team like he's got. Yes. I, I, and, you know, I know, Barney, your knowledge is so deep. It's amazing. And tell, tell us a little bit about your location and when your customers come to the store, what are they experiencing? Yeah. Um, so we're located on Main Street in Lexington, Kentucky. We've got free parking right at the back of our store. We've actually just done a remodel to uh, most of our store right now. So our displays and the store is just the best it's ever been. We can take somebody through what we call a technology tour and let them learn about all the possibilities of technology, obviously including home theater, but there's many other things, networking, security, cameras, lighting control, shades, you know, you name it, you know, home theater seating. So really we've got all that on display. We've got, uh, you know, several different Sony projectors on display and uh, some really fun stuff. So it's, it's, it's really fun stuff. And uh, 
I think that uh, very exciting moving forward in this industry is it just keeps getting better and better. And again, I think this is probably as good of year, um, you know, technology wise and source wise and movie wise as we've ever had. I think, you know, the COVID thing shut down the movie theaters and uh, it, it's been an incredible year for home theater. And I think going forward, people are going to realize that they can get a first run movie. And, you know, it seems like that some of the uh, some of the streaming services are uh, you know actually bundling them for free in some of these packages. But I've seen like a first run movie for like nineteen ninety nine um, that you could if you had to buy it just by itself or rent it by itself I should say. So you can have your whole family watch it. I mean, try to go to the movie theater for twenty dollars. It ain't gonna work. That's impossible now. Absolutely, yeah. Last time I took the uh, the kids to the movies, I mean, I think we we spent 150 bucks to uh, to go to the movies. So twenty dollars is a bargain. So, and and Barney, where you just told me you just ordered our uh, our newest uh, newest laser projector, our 915 uh, ES projector. Is that correct? Yes, we did, and uh, that'll be in, in one of our theaters. We've got two projectors already in stock, but the uh, they're non-laser projectors, so we're excited to put that on display. We we hope to have that on display in probably a week to ten days. And uh, it's just an unbelievable picture. Again, 4K laser technology, so you don't have to replace the lamps. And uh, I think people will be amazed how good the picture quality is on this thing. Yes. And that's the nice thing about your, having your store is that, you know, we're, we're talking about this technology. We're talking about home theaters and projectors and screens. So somebody can come and actually experience it because it's one thing to talk about this technology, but it's another thing to come in and actually feel you know the sound as, as it's moving through the room when you're watching a movie and the, the crispness of the picture so you know having that is is such a great thing and I think even Kevin that's you know you're, you're doing that you're sending your customers to Barney's store to sort of sell you know because really this technology I think the experience sells it oh absolutely it does and like I said it, and the Barney show is amazing I've never had a customer go there and not be satisfied so they do it right yeah. over there. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing so, so, is definitely believing there. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, can, you can show somebody a spec sheet out of a book, but that really doesn't do it justice, you know? And so there's different qualities of picture. There's different qualities of sound. There's how to control it. And everybody can kind of, you know, hands-on experience before they buy at Barney Miller's in our showroom. So we're really proud of that. We put a lot of effort into our showroom. I can tell you that it's, it's not an easy project to keep the new products there and that type of thing. And, and our team does a fantastic job of that. And, you know, talking to integrators across the country, I can attest that not many, not all integrators have a beautiful showroom. So, you know, you definitely um, have an edge in being able to show a client what they're going to experience as opposed to telling them. You're absolutely right. Talk to us about the other elements when, when you're having, just to give our audience an idea of what it includes. You know, what about soundproofing, flooring, furniture? Yeah, so like just kind of going through it, you know, it's screen size. It's going to be, uh, you know, how, how good, so what level of performance do you want? You know, we start early on on that because there is a fairly dramatic, well, there's not a fairly, there is a dramatic difference on how much you can spend on a home theater. So number one, we try to kind of get our arms around that, but screen size, the room environment that it's going in, we don't really try to do soundproofing, but we try to do acoustic treatments. So we try to take care of the sound in the room. There are some environments where we try to keep sound coming out of the room, but for the most part, we try to treat in the room. And then there's, what are you gonna watch? So obviously streaming is very popular nowadays. The best possible picture though is Blu-rays and video servers, that type of thing. And then sound quality, it, it can go from you know A to Z. It's unbelievable you know, how good you can get sound. Dolby Atmos, as Andrew described, and that is getting very popular nowadays because it's a three-dimensional sound system that you would hear in a movie theater and we can recreate that in the home very easily now. So that's incredibly popular. And then how to control the system is probably as important as anything that we possibly do. So if you have five remote controls on your coffee table and you're trying to operate your home theater, forget it. So we wanna make sure <laughs> we, have, we have one remote control 
and possibly an app even to complement that handheld remote control. You know, if you're a flickaholic, you want to have a handheld remote control of some kind, but for the most part, we want to have that happen. So, and we can create scenes on that control. And then seating is very important too. So you want to be comfortable. We do a really good job with home theater seating. They've got LED lights. They've got, so like our most popular chairs have lumbar motorized, recline motorized and headrest motorized. So you can really get comfortable that way. You're not putting a pillow behind your neck. You're not putting a pillow on your back. The chair conforms to how you want it to be. And then, you know, cup holders, wine glass holders, trays. We've even got uh, little uh, holders that hold the, uh, like a tablet. So if you wanted to have that there, have your control there. So I really, it's just amazing all the different options are there. And, and we can show everybody these types of options on our showroom. Awesome. So, you know, Andrew, um, are you, are you, are we saying that we can duplicate or come close to a stand, standalone home theater and a home theater in a family room, like in a big open room? Can we come close and how close can we get with the equipment? Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, obviously the, the best you know, experience are usually done in a dedicated space where, as Barney was mentioning, you're doing sound treatment of the room, you're getting that perfect speaker placement, uh, but, uh, you know, not everybody has that, uh, that perfect space. So, you know, this is really one area where we get to leverage our technology. You know, Sony, we are a, uh, we are a complete end-to-end uh, solution provider. So, uh, you know, we look at uh, really a big part of what we do is our as our lens to living room story. Uh, you know, we make the uh, the cameras that they're they're shooting sporting events with and movies. We have our sister company, Sony Motion Picture Studios. Um, we make the projectors that are going into uh, into the professional cinemas, uh, as well as all of the the monitoring and editing equipment that uh, that the rec- that the movies, TV programs sporting events, everything is being shot on. So by understanding how all of that, that happens on the, uh, the, on the production side, it helps us deliver the best possible experience when it's actually in the home. So we can look at a, at a, you know, everything from that dedicated space to a multi-purpose room and really adapt these uh, here very, very easily. Um, you know, with uh, with be a a flat panel system where you have you know up to a, up to a hundred inch flat panel uh, coming here available here uh, here this summer where we've got a, a new uh, large large screen uh, display coming out and an LED uh, to our projectors going anywhere from you know fifteen hundred lumens up to over ten thousand of lumens so I can work in in pretty much any space with any screen size that you can uh, you can throw at it. And then one of my favorites is doing a like a three piece system where maybe you don't have a, uh, a room that's perfect for movies all the time. You can have a nice 75, 85 inch panel mounted on the wall and then have a 120 inch screen drop down along with the shades for more nighttime and and lower mm-hmm. lower light viewing. So you can actually go, you know, multiple displays in one room and then the audio receivers having the ability to uh, to tune the sound through to the room. Uh, we, uh, all of our receivers use a, a, a multi-point uh, equalization system that allows you to compensate for the room not being perfect. Is, you know, unfortunately, most, most rooms aren't. So, uh, yeah. so our receivers will compensate for you know, the acoustics of your room and get you the best possible sound quality. We, wanna, we don't want to leave tonight without talking about out, the outdoor experience because we know outdoor TVs went insane this summer, last summer. Barney, can you tell us a little bit about home theater outdoors? Yes, yes. and we do, we do quite a bit of outdoor um, environments with audio video work. We don't do a whole lot of surround sound systems outside, but we do a lot of stereo systems outside Mm -hmm. by the pool, on your patio, all weather TVs, that type of thing. So um, it's, it's a really extension of what's in your house outside of your house. So that has been very popular. If I could just real touch on one other thing, I tell you that something else has been coming really popular is short throw projectors. So you don't always have to hang a projector in the middle of your room. Um, we re- recently installed a Sony projector in a uh, home theater stand, and they're very up close to the wall, and the screen is there. So a 120-inch screen, you can get 
with a projector literally I think roughly about two to three feet from the wall. And so it's pretty amazing. So there's a lot more flexibility nowadays and a whole lot better picture quality than there used to be. Great. Kevin, are you, Kek, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah, those, those short throw projectors are also a great solution to overcome issues where you do not have a, a great, uh, great space for the, maybe you can't hang a projector. You've got half tall ceilings. Uh, we can do uh, those short throw projectors in a stand mounted uh, there below the screen and, you know, even combine them with a, uh, with a motorized screen. If you've got windows, you don't want to block off those, uh, those windows uh, for, uh, you know, that, that beautiful view that you've paid for. A motorized screen with, a, uh, with either a short throw or standard projector can be a great solution to give you a, a, a large viewing experience without, uh, without sacrificing the aesthetics and the view of your room. Kevin, are you are you seeing in building? Are you seeing a trend towards more standalone or more family room setups? What are you seeing? Say, what are people just, asking for or expecting in luxury home building? We used to do about 50-50. You know, fifty percent of our customers have a de designated theater room, but now I think it's leaning more towards probably seventy-five percent are doing the theaters. I think that's because what's we're seeing in you know the world the last year, like we've talked about, where you can see first-run movies and you know. It's, Spend 20 bucks rather than 150 bucks, which is a pretty good deal. So I think the trend going forward, I believe, is going to be we're going to see more of the designated true home theater rooms. That's great. And then, you know, one one more thing for, for you, Andrew, was, you know, we know PlayStation was a huge thing this year. And, um, you know, there's technology now to really maximize uh, the experience with the PlayStation. Is, is Sony releasing certain TVs for to go with PlayStation or certain equipment that will enhance the experience even further? So, so yeah, great question. And, and I get this one all the time. So yes, we do actually have a, a number of different TVs which are actually uh, specifically uh, PlayStation 5 certified uh, with, uh, and going into our new 2021 lineup of TVs which are gonna be starting to ship here in about the next uh, you know, 45 days, all of our uh, new premium TVs will be PS5 certified uh, with, with special features like HDMI 2.1 for auto low latency modes and uh, variable refresh rates, uh, high frame rate content of up to 120 hertz. Uh, so that's very important for your, uh, for your smaller screen gaming experiences. Uh, for your larger screen experiences, our projectors do, a, uh, do an amazing job, whether it's a, a PlayStation, uh, you know, five or four or whichever generation you're running uh, with our uh, 4K HDR, um, our, uh, you have very fast, uh, very fast low latency lag time on it. So, you know, basically when you pull that, uh, when you turn that steering wheel or pull that trigger on your game, you want the, uh, the screen to respond exactly the same. And so our projectors, again, this actually kind of comes from, a, uh, from the professional side, uh, Sony 4K projectors are the number one projector used in high-end digital simulation environments. And so if you, you've got somebody learning to fly, actually fly a fighter jet on a Sony projector, I think it's good enough for Call of Duty. So uh, it blends <laughs> over really nicely there. So yeah, and that's, yeah. And, and that application I think is another thing to look at when you're designing a room of who's gonna be using it. Um, you know, I like to, you know, this is one story I love to, to share about my, my setup here. Yes, I'm in here all the time, but who actually gets more use out of it is my kids and you know they're in here they're playing playing games they they've got the playstation and the xbox they bring their friends over and they're you know they're there's a whole bunch i've got 17 year old triplets and uh you know so lots of lots of kids at the house all the time but the beautiful thing about that is is i you know if the kids are here yeah sometimes it's a hassle but i know where my kids are they're not over you know out out raising raising heck you somewhere else here you know, I've got, uh, I look at that as the best investment I've got in this space is that my kids and their friends love being here at our house and we know what's going on with everyone. So it's a, uh, it's a really great experience to have, have the family and, you know, friends being able to, to enjoy the space. I agree. Yes. And, and I think, you know, so we talked about, right. So this home theater, whether it's, is there's multi-purpose, right? I think there's trends now towards using it for wellness as well. If someone wants to do yoga, people want to work. So, so right, this home theater is not just for movies anymore. And 
And really quickly, so we talked, Barney, you, you mentioned that budgets are all, you know, so obviously there's budgets could be from small to large for something like this, but from a timing perspective, if somebody comes and says, okay, I want to put a home theater in my room, what is the timeline? Like how long from, I guess, the, the time where you start to talk about the design to actually the build out, what can somebody expect in terms of that? Yeah, so typically people come in, you know, and talk to us about, you know, what their wishes are, that type of thing. And we give them a technology tour, talk about their interest. Then we want to make a site visit. I mean, we would never do a proposal without going out and do a site visit or in the case of a new construction with, you know, the great Kerwin homes, then, you know, we would want to look at blueprints and things like that and get a pretty good idea of the environment and what's going on. So really that that's probably the most important thing. And then uh, from there, we create a proposal, you know, if it's, if it's perfect, great. If not, we tweak it and go from there. So probably about a, at least a week to 10 days is that process right there. And then once we get a signed contract and a deposit, then we, we make sure that we've got all the products in before we start doing things. So there is retrofit and there's new construction. So those are two different things all together. New construction, you've got, you know, that obviously the design, then you've got pre-wire, then you've got trim out, and then you've got the final installation. So depending on how long it takes the, to build the house, you know, Kevin can touch on that probably better than I can, but several months anyway, at minimum. Um, a, a retrofit environment, I would say three weeks to four weeks is probably pretty reasonable, um, you know, for the whole thing. Um, could be a little less, could be a little more, you know, it, it depends on the challenges that are there for us. But, uh, you know, again, new construction versus retrofit are totally different environments. I love that you brought up retrofit because that just reminds people at home, if you're, you don't have to be building a new home and you don't have to have a, a room that, that you had dedicated from the start to be a home theater. But, you know, with the experts sitting on, on this panel, what we're learning is home theaters can be created in your home after the fact. So don't think that if you didn't start with one, you can't add it now. So I, I love I love that point. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, it's it's obviously always easier, especially you know wanting to hide wires and so so on to do it when the walls are open. But certainly, there's enough expertise from Barney Miller to get it done properly in retrofit as well. I always tell people there's a whole lot more existing houses than there is new construction. So we yeah. we obviously do a lot of retrofit environments, but yeah. we we love working with uh, Mike Kerwin Homes and and uh, being able to plan things from the very beginning. That's always such a a great thing to be able to do. Yeah, the point there is that right if you are starting a new home project that you want to bring an integrator like Barney Miller in with your builder from the start, right? Because that's when the planning should be at the beginning. Oh, absolutely. As soon as, I, as soon as a homeowner says they want to do home theater, that's my, I give him, I think Doug Hocker is our sales representative for Barney and he's a great gentleman. He, uh, he's the first contact I give them as soon as they say home theater. Now let's let them go meet Barney and them and they get it all worked out for me. Right. Now, are any of the, I'm just curious, um, Kevin, are, what are the, the state, are, are any of these products coming standard in your custom homes now? maybe not specific to home theater, but are you putting speakers? Is there, what type of technologies that Barney offers? Are you just putting on, you know, the ex expectation when you start a home? Usually we do, you know, we, outside of the theater room, we usually have whole house audio. Uh, Barney's actually done some, uh, some house for me. We've got security cameras. Uh, you've done some alarm systems for me. So th there's actually a lot of stuff that Barney's team's helped us out with through several houses. But uh, we really don't have anything that's like a spec for a certain house. We're truly a custom home. So we let the customer decide everything they want to do. That's great. Well, you bring their lives, uh, their dreams to life in their homes, right? Talk about a dream team here, right? <laughs> well, we got, help, we got help from a lot of people and Barney's one of them. So that's the goal though. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Very good. Well, how are we doing with time, Reese? Uh, yeah, I, it's actually... It's about that time. We don't like to go too long. So let me see if there's any questions. We have, we have one question in the chat um, and I'm, we can address this. I, it's somebody that says they want to create a home theater in their living room. Is it better for them to use a projector or, and a screen or a TV? And will they need automated shades for both options? 
And, and so I, I can address that. I think that uh, they really ought to come down and, and really get a and experience the different the different displays. We can we, we actually have motorized shades on display. We can show them how that would work. So, you know, it would really depend on their environment and their budget, in all honesty, and the performance level that they're after. But it absolutely can happen. And as far as a projector is concerned, um, you know, the, the short throw stuff is, is kind of less, less uh, intrusive and, and uh, easier to install. But uh, it just depends on the room layout, really, a lot of it. Yeah, that's that's really kind of where I was going to say with it is you've got to you've got to trust your eyes, you've got to experience these different systems, and so I've had a, a you know a lot of clients where I've I've been doing systems for that say you know hey I just want a TV in here but then they they experience a great projection system and see how how dynamic and immersive the uh, the the system can be and say wait a minute now we we need to to rethink this uh, this whole project because I want want to have this space and had they not seen it. You know, it, it never, it would have just been a TV in that room. So definitely come down and, and experience what these projectors and screens can do. Great, awesome. Did anybody have anything else to add before we wrap up? Barney, any uh, parting word? I'd like to invite anybody to come down. We've got free parking at our back door on Water Street, downtown Lexington, real easy to get to. And uh, I think you'll be amazed at our, our showroom nowadays. It's a, uh, it's just gotten a fresh look and we've got the latest and greatest technology. We've got a very experienced 14 person staff. I mean, the average uh, time at Barney Miller's is roughly about 20 years now with my staff. So, I mean, we really know what we're talking about. We're continuing to be educated. People like Andrew come in and, uh, you know, teach us the latest and greatest and uh, people like that. And of course, Working with Kerwin uh, Homes has, has just been amazing. They uh, they build just fantastic homes. I think, uh, you know, talk to those folks it is just an amazing experience also. Well, I think just, just having Kevin and Andrew here is a testament to Barney Miller. I'm sure Sony doesn't make everyone a dealer. And I'm sure a, a premier builder like Kevin doesn't just pick anybody to be their integrator. Well, we're we're proud to partner with uh, with Sony and uh, Mike Kerwin Homes. Uh, it uh, it's a great team, and uh, it's it's a great solution for our clients too. Great. Well, you have a lot of support. That's thank for you. sure. Yes. Well, I'd like to thank the audience at home for joining us tonight. We hope that you enjoyed this conversation. It was enlightening, and certainly reach out to Barney Miller. Um, stay tuned for future tech and design Facebook live events as we announce those on the Facebook page. And very quickly, I'm going to share my screen. So if any of you would like to reach out to any of the panelists directly, if you have any questions, if you want to schedule appointments or, or, or get some advice, I'll share my screen so that you can have their contact information if you want to send somebody an email. Hold on. Hmm. course and then we will wrap it up okay so here is everyone's contact information if anybody wants to reach out awesome perfect and thank you all for joining us tonight and have a great all right. night all right see you guys Bye. Bye. thanks everyone have a great evening perfect have thank you evening. have a good night take care